This little camera in my hands here is the Sony ZV-1. When it was announced, people said that this was the best point and shoot vlogging camera. And as somebody that comes from a vlogging background, I've been using this for over a month now. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you about my time spent with the ZV-1 and answer that all important question. Is this the best vlogging camera of 2020? Let's find out here on MQuan Reviews. So I want to start off this review by taking a closer look at the design of the camera before we discuss exactly what this camera is capable of. So to begin with, you'll notice that the Sony ZV-1 looks very similar to the kind of point and shoot standard cameras that are very popular amongst vloggers. We're talking about the likes from Canon and their G7X series and Sony's very own RX100 series as well. Now, I also own an RX100 Mark VI and in terms of comparison, it looks very, very similar to that. There are some fundamental differences. To begin with, the Sony ZV-1 is much more a video first style of point and shoot camera, whereas the RX100 series is basically focused around photography first and foremost. So the differences there are on the ZV-1, you have much better grip. It's also lighter when compared with the RX100, Mark VI or 7. And also there are slight differences to the way that the buttons are laid out. So you have more functional buttons when it comes to video on the ZV-1 as opposed to the RX100 Mark VI. Another noticeable difference is when it comes to the display. So on the RX100 series, you have a flip up display on the newer ZV-1 you have a side flip out display now there are advantages to both of them but the main advantage for this new side flip out display is the fact that it doesn't block the hot shoot at the top there is one other point which is it's a three inch LCD touch screen the touch element of a lot of Sony displays is limited so you're not going to be using that touch display to scroll through menus and select options it's really limited to a few core functions like tracking, focus, and I hope in the future we can see more functionality from the Sony displays across their camera line. Right, you're on a tripod. Let me talk to you about one of the big, big features in any camera, particularly a vlogging camera, which you should be thinking about if you're choosing one, and that is autofocus. So on the Sony ZV-1, there is one feature that really surprised me because it's the same feature that you'll find in a much more expensive uh, A6600, which is also something that I use on the channel, and that is a real-time eye autofocus. It does an incredibly, incredibly good job at locking on to my eye or one of my eyes and following it through. Now, what I'm going to do now is actually demo for you using the A6600 what I'm talking about. You should be able to see that little square that's locked on to my eye. And as I move around, it will do such a good job at keeping that in focus. And even if I have that covered up, it comes back almost instantaneously. So as with any camera, audio quality is very important. And you'd be happy to know on the ZV-1, it's actually very good. And that's down to a directional three capsule microphone. And that's great because for front facing recording, it does a very good job. Plus, if you wanna go with an external microphone, you can also use that as well because there's an input jack for that. All right, so I'm gonna show you first of all what steady shot looks like on the ZV-1. Incidentally, while I'm doing that, pay attention to the audio because I've got the windshield on. Hopefully, you should be able to hear me clearly without much wind, and there's a bit of wind here on this podium area. So to begin with, on the steady shot front, we've basically got three options, off, standard, and then active. Right now, it's off completely. So as I move around, as I walk around, hopefully that should give you an idea of what it's like completely turned off. Now let's show it to you with the standard turned on. So this is the standard version turned on. And again, I'm just gonna walk around to give you an idea of how well it performs. So this is what it's like with active steady shot turned on. And uh, for the last month or so, I've been filming majority of the shots, particularly for the vlogs in this format. Now, the first thing that you'll notice when I do it like this is that the image is cropped in slightly. So you do lose a bit of that image on the background, but the upside to that hopefully should be that as I'm walking around, it should be smoother overall. But let me know in the comment section down below what you think. So 
part of the problem, particularly here in Dubai and Abu Dhabi, is when you're filming out in summer like this within a couple of minutes, you get hot and sweaty, so forgive the sweat uh, if you see any on your screen. But right now, one of the features that I want to showcase is a feature called defocus. Now, this is something that you might find on kind of a DSLR uh, where you can blur out the background or the bokeh kind of effect. Now, on the ZV-1, there's one button that you need to hit to basically add that kind of effect in the background and let me just demo to you what it looks like so right now I have it turned off and you should be able to see the background quite clearly but when I do this it defocuses the background or adds that blur or bokeh kind of effect so the background is slightly blurred now it should give attention to my face so let me turn it off again and you can see the background more clearly now and I'll turn it back on again there we go you also get zoom on the Sony ZV-1. It goes from 24 all the way up to 70 millimeters. It's not as much as the RX100, uh, particularly my Mark VI, but it still does a good job. And zoom is there if you need it. All right, so this next feature is probably my one favorite feature out of all of those that were announced on the new ZV-1. And it's because of the fact that I would use this on a daily basis if I'm using this camera. That is called the product showcase. This is the ability for the autofocus to clearly and quickly focus on a product in my hand over my face. So in the past, what a lot of people might uh, need to do is actually put their hand over a product uh, for it to focus whereas in this situation it is super fast let's check this out so it's already turned on right now you should be focusing on me and boom Woo! take it away boom <laughs> take it away it does such a good job sony have done an incredible job on the autofocus front and with a feature like product showcase it just takes it to that next level amazing right boom whoa Boom! Now, as well as being a video first kind of point and shoot, it still does a very, very good job when it comes to photography. So here are a couple of shots that I've taken with the Sony ZV-1, just to give you an idea in different situations. And I think you'll agree with me when I say that a lot of these shots come out quite good, very well for a point and shoot camera. And this next feature might appeal to some of you that want to make sure that you look super fresh and that is the smooth skin effect so this is inbuilt into the uh, Sony ZV-1 right now I have it turned off so let's use kind of my current skin status which I think isn't really great but some people say that my wife says I've got a pretty good skin but uh, let's use that as a marker so this is that feature turned off <laughs> I look like some kind of anime object right now, but this is the full feature turned on. There are a couple of layers to this, so you can have it uh, low, mid, or high. I've turned it on high. I think this is a little too exaggerated. And this is with it turned low. Let me know what you think. I think this is a bit more realistic, closer to what my natural skin looks like. Now, one of the things that if you pick up a Sony ZV-1, you have to get is this, and that is a ridiculously long name uh, wireless grip. Essentially, it is a Bluetooth powered grip that will connect to not only your ZV-1, but it will also connect with other Sony cameras if you have that. And it's very, very good. I thought initially it was gonna be a bit of a gimmick, but it's actually practically very, very useful. Number one, you've got this kind of tripod format that you can have set up in different ways. The back or the front, whatever you wanna call it, are some uh, controls. So for example, you could Zoom in, <laughs> zoom out, and yes, it's not on the top, but it's still connected to the camera, hence the reason why it's still working. You've got a button for the photo, the movie, and also the C1, uh, which I've got programmed for the defocus or the bokeh effect. Right, next, let's talk about the all-important battery life. So these are the batteries that run or power the ZV-1, the NPBX1s. These are the same batteries that are used in the RX100 series. And to be totally honest on the ZV-1, these batteries, I was getting around about 30 minutes to 40 minutes maximum of video time, which let's be honest, isn't great. So what I would recommend is that you pick up at least one or two additional batteries. The ZV-1 does have on the other side, a micro USB port that you can use to plug into a portable battery. That means that unlike the RX100 series, which I think trickle feeds 
um, some power, you can actually run, even when your battery is completely depleted, uh, the ZV-1 with that portable battery charger, which is a big, big lifesaver when it comes to power. There are a few other things. Number one, as useful as this grip is, and it really is, just be very, very careful because when you're not using it and it's in your bag, make sure it's turned to lock. If it's not, check this out. It will actually register. And what I found a couple of times was I turned on the ZV-1 and it was completely depleted out of battery despite me not having used it. And that's because for some reason it was registering. I don't know why. Um, the other thing is if you decide not to use the grip at all, then that's fine, but make sure you turn Bluetooth off on your ZV-1. So I wanna take a moment to talk to you quickly about the pricing. This is not the cheapest vlogging camera, but I don't think it's intended to be that. This in this market here in the UAE is gonna set you back 3,099 dirhams, uh, which is around about 700 to 750 US dollars, slightly more if you go with the bundle package that comes with the grip and a few other accessories, but I think it's good value. It's good value, because as someone who's used a range of different uh, vlogging cameras, I think, first of all, if you know that you want a designated video camera for your needs, be it a vlogging channel, a tech channel, makeup, lifestyle, I don't know, traveling, whatever. If you're clear that you need a separate designated video camera, then it can be quite tempting to go for a cheaper option. But what happens is sometimes when you start off, you don't realize you need certain, uh, you know, features and, and, and functions until you're into that. And a lot of those features and functions are available on the ZV-1, but also it's done really, really well on the ZV-1. So, I mean, I've used cheaper um, video cameras. I've used more expensive video cameras. I think the ZV-1 is a very, very good in the middle video camera. And things like 4K, you know, issues around overheating, which are not here on the ZV-1, like they're on some other um, point and shoot cameras, stabilization, autofocus, really, really important factors when you are putting together video content, the ZV-1 does very, very good. So initially it might seem like a lot of money, but I think it's money well spent. M. Kwan, it can't be all perfect, right? Well, yes, you're right. There are a couple of things that really do annoy me about the ZV-1, and I hope Sony watched this and hopefully improve on them. The first one is down there at the bottom. See that? It's the same as the RX100 series. There is a tripod mount at the bottom that covers completely this, which is the SD card and the battery uh, compartment. It's so, so annoying. So if you use a tripod like I regularly do, I'm in trouble because it means I have to unclip it every time, and screw it, whatever, just to gain access to both the SD card and the battery compartment. The second thing which I've already mentioned is the battery life. I hope that improves in the next iteration. And the final thing for me is prop element of it, particularly when it's on steady shot. I do find it's just cropped in a little too much for my liking when I'm vlogging. And uh, and that's, that's about it. It is a pretty cool piece of kit. Let me know your thoughts about the Sony ZV-1. Have you picked one up? Are you thinking about picking one up? And if you're new around here, then as always, be sure to smash that subscribe button so that you see more video content like this go live. Plus, if you have enjoyed this video, hit like and leave your comment down below. Stay safe, peace and blessings.